All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Victoria, and I'm the Channel and Field Marketing Manager for the East Coast in Canada over here at Critical Start. Before we begin, I'd love to go over a couple of housekeeping items. So this session is being recorded. You will receive the recording within 24 hours post-event. We will be launching a poll at the end of this presentation, so please only click your answer once, otherwise it'll get rid of your answer. Feel free to use the chat function in the right uh, function panel. The more interactive during the presentation, the better. Everyone is automatically muted. If you would like to ask your question live, please click raise your hand and we'll bring you up on stage. Otherwise, place your question either in the chat or text Q&A. Now, I'd like to hand it over to Callie Gunther, Senior Manager of Cyber Threat Research. Callie, all you. Thank you, Victoria. Um, welcome to Decoding the Shadows, Proactive Cybersecurity Through Managed Threat Intelligence, where we'll navigate the intricate web of ransomware as a service, or RAS, and its impact on the cyber land security landscape as RAS operations have proliferated. The complexity and frequency of ransomware attacks have surged and presenting new challenges in tracking and mitigating these threats. Today, we're going to discuss the multifaceted world of ransomware affiliates whose diverse attack chains have blurred the lines of attribution and defense. Our journey today will take us through the critical process of organizational clustering, a methodological approach to discerning the chaos of affiliate-driven ransomware campaigns, to discerning the <clears throat> um, by delving into specific tactics and spearheading broad methodologies from nuanced details unique to each affiliate, we aim to shed light on the patterns that distinguish one attacker from another. Featuring detailed case studies of threat activity clusters, or TACs as we'll call them, will demonstrate how the identification of unique indicators across various incidents enable us to connect the dots, revealing patterns of behavior that pers persist regardless of ransomware variant deployed. This session is designed to equip intelligence consumers with the knowledge to compare attack chains, identify overlaps in TTPs, and generate actionable intelligence. Our goal is to empower you to form effective de detections, and swiftly identify malicious activity, ultimately preventing ransomware deployment and safeguarding your organization against this pervasive threat. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Callie Gunther, and I'm the Senior Manager of the Cyber Threat Research here at Critical Start. My background through most of my military career was intelligence systems as a part of the United States Navy. I transitioned to a corporate intelligence analyst role after my time in Afghanistan, working on a few projects building out dark web monitoring capabilities. I graduated from Johns Hopkins University with an MS in government analytics and data science in 2018. Shortly after, I started at Critical Start as our CyberSoc data scientist. I spent a couple of years on the engineering side of the house before being called back into the intelligence space. And as I mentioned, I'm now the senior manager here running the cyber research unit, which encompasses collections management, CTI, threat research, malware analysis and reverse engineering, detection development, and our threat hunting programs. Critical Start, for those of you who aren't familiar, simplifies breach prevention with managed detection and response services that flex to your business objectives and cybersecurity vision, regardless of its complexity. With the only technology in the industry that allows you to detect every threat and resolve every alert whenever and wherever you are, an expert SOC team that can act on your behalf, plus cyber threat research and threat detection development at your service, we can detect the right threats and respond with the right actions to effectively stop breaches. Today, as we explore the ransomware as a service landscape, we'll begin with the dark web origins of cyber threats. We'll identify initial indicators of threats from dark web activity, including threat actor exchanges and proof of concept code development. We'll examine the transition from dark web to RAS detailing the ecosystem and the interplay between developers, affiliates, and IABs or initial access brokers. This session will focus on clustering attacker behavior, breaking down the process of identifying, categorizing attack chains, and will differentiate between the common and unique tactics that detail how these inform our understanding of specific affiliates. Case studies will show the application of clustering to reveal patterns and inform defense strategies. We aim to provide intelligence to enhance defensive measures against ransomware. And we'll conclude with some notes on how managed threat intelligence plays a pivotal role in this exploration and how we aim to empower our consumers with the knowledge for proactive cyber defense. 
So as we all know, threats are evolving rapidly, fueled by technological advancements and an ever-expanding attack surface. From sophisticated state-sponsored actors to financially motivated cybercrimes, the diversity and complexity of these threats pose a significant challenge to organizations worldwide. Our focus today will delve into the inception of these threats, tracing their origins from the covert discussions to full-fledged cyber attacks. The dark web, a hidden part of the internet, accessibly, accessible only through specialized tools like Tor, serves as a breeding ground for cybercrime. Here, that anonymity shields threat actors, allowing them to communicate, collaborate, and trade malicious tools and services with impunity. This segment of the dark web has played a pivotal role in the evolution of cybercrime, facilitating the transition from isolated incidents to organized, commoditized, commoditized uh, cyber criminal activities. In the shadow of the dark web, the initial indicators of emerging threats begin to surface. These include web chatter among threat actors, exchange of attack methodologies, and the development of proof of concept code. These early signs are crucial for the intelligence offering a glimpse into the potential future attacks. Recognizing and interpreting these signals is a first step in proactive cyber defense. Now, understanding the dark web's role in, cyber, in the cybercrime ecosystem is really essential for effective threat intelligence. It's a marketplace and a forum, an arena where ideas are exchanged and collaborations are formed. The anonymity it offers is a double-edged sword, providing both privacy for activists and journalists and a veil for cyber criminals. Our journey into threat intelligence begins with dissecting these dynamics, enabling us to predict and counteract these emerging threats. The path from dark web discussions to actionable threats involves a complex transformation. Ideas and concepts developed in the dark web's hidden forms can evolve into sophisticated attack vectors. This progression from theory to practice is often rapid, aided by the collaborative nature of dark web communities. Today, we'll explore how these discussions materialize into larger, tangible threats with a focus on emerging the emergence of ransomware. Ransomware, a prevalent and disruptive form of cyber attack, often finds roots in its dark, in dark web. From the early stages of development to the establishment of RAS platforms, the dark web has been instrumental in the proliferation of ransomware. We'll examine case studies where ransomware strains were first signaled on dark web forums before manifesting into widespread campaigns, underscoring the critical need for vigilant and proactive threat intelligence. Here, we're going to explore the RAS model, a paradigm shift in the cybercrime world. Like traditional ransomware attacks, where a single entity is responsible for both the creation and deployment, RAS, or ransomware as a service, operates on a collaborative model. This model is akin to the nefarious franchise, where the RAS providers offer ransomware tools in, and infrastructure to affiliates who then execute the attacks. Microsoft provides an illustrative graphic that sheds light on the roles within the ecosystem. At its core are the initial access brokers, or IABs, specialists in breaching network defenses through various means, such as compromised credentials and exploits. While not all affiliates rely on IABs, their services have become a cornerstone due to their widespread availability. The backbone of RAS is formed by the developers and service level operators. These individuals are tasked with the creation and upkeep of ransomware tools. Additionally, they manage centralized data leak platforms where affiliates can publicize stolen data for exert, to exert pressure on the victims. Then we have the affiliates, the end users in the revenue models. These, these users subscribe to RAS offerings gaining access to sophisticated tools to infiltrate and encrypt systems in targeted organizations. The RAS ecosystem supports a diverse group of revenue models, each with its own advantage and drawbacks. It's crucial to acknowledge the complexity and vastness of the cybercriminal network. The RAS model with its multiple stakeholders and dynamic nature add layers and layers of complexity to cybersecurity efforts. Given the limited time and expansive scope of this topic, we can only cover sort of the surface today. 
But for those eager to dive, dive deeper, resources like the Sands Institute offer valuable insights. Their ransomware and cyber extortion um, website is particularly informative. In the RAS business, affiliates weigh various factors when choosing a provider, such as the cost effectiveness, tool reliability, and reputation of the RAS group. Dissatisfaction with revenue sharing, improved detection mechanisms, or law enforcement actions can prompt affiliates to switch allegiances, creating a fluid, unpredictable threat landscape. Imagine the RAS ecosystem as an iceberg. What we've discussed so far is just a tip. Beneath the surface, the complexity multiplies exponentially. Consider adding a dozen more affiliates, intertwining their operations with IABs, negotiators, data managers, and the like. The real landscape of RAS is bewildering, bewilderingly intricate. To simplify our discussion, let's consider a hypothetical scenario involving five affiliates using LockBit 3.0 ransomware. Affiliate 1, a longtime user of LockBit, remains loyal due to its effectiveness. Affiliates 2 and 3, originally with Hive ransomware, were forced to switch to LockBit 3.0 after Hive was dismantled by law enforcement in early 2023. Around the same time, Affiliates 4 and 5 joined the LockBit bandwagon. However, the plot thickens as the as dissatisfaction arises, affiliates two, four, and five, seeking higher profits or operational efficiency, began exploring other RAS offerings. Affiliate four moves to the notorious Black Cat or Alpha V, while affiliate five opts for the lesser known Reseda ransomware, hoping to evade detection. This dynamic landscape presents a formidable challenge for threat intelligence and defense. Keeping track of these shifting affiliations requires more than just traditional method. It demands innovative approaches like clustering. Clustering threat actor activities involves grouping related threat behaviors to better track and understand cyber criminal operations. While many frameworks exist for analyzing threats, such as the diamond model of intrusion analysis, for our focus today is on the tactical and operational aspects of these activities. We'll concentrate on the visible indicators of the recurring patterns in tradecraft and the core tactics, techniques, and procedures, or TTPs, while strategic insights such as long-term goals and victimology are valuable, our immediate goal is to identify the actionable intelligence based on observable actions, tools, and infrastructure. Clustering is not a one-size-fits-all process. It's nuanced, often ambiguous, and requires significant effort and collaboration. Many organizations develop proprietary methodology for clustering and attribution to navigate this complexity. Today, we'll explore some of the methodologies and how they relate to cyber threat intelligence. At Critical Start, the Cyber Research Unit, or CREW, our approach to deciphering the complex web of cyber threats begins with a seemingly straightforward two-step process. Each newly identified cluster of threat activity is assigned a unique identifier, dubbed CTAC, or CREW Threat Activity Cluster, followed by a four-digit code. Virch digit categories is the type of the threat, such as state-sponsored activities, initial access broker, ransomware, and so forth. Upon establishing a CTAC, our team embarks on a rigorous phase of monitoring and review. During this period, we actively incorporate evidence from related incidents and scour open source intelligence to enrich our understanding of the cluster. Our objective is to comprehensively map out the strategic, operational, and tactical dimensions of the cluster. Once we've amassed a robust intelligence profile and achieved high confidence in both attribution and sustained nature of activities, a CTAC graduates to being recognized as a named actor or intrusion set. It's important to note that different organizations may adopt varying methodologies for clustering and attribution, shaped by their unique insights and perspectives. For instance, Microsoft recently updated its naming tax taxonomy for threat actors, while Palo Alto Networks Unit 42 employs a, employs a three-stage process, initially identifying a cluster as a temporary actor before assigning it a formal name. 
Unit 42, also leverages the diamond model as a pivotal tool in their analytical process. Mandian, on the other hand, has shared insights into their approach, which involve the use of advanced algorithmic methods to facilitate a largely automated clustering, mimicking manual intervention. This diversity in approach underscores a crucial point. Clustering is, a distinct, is distinct from attribution. While attribution sinks to unravel the who and the why behind cyber threats, clustering is focused on the where, the how, and the what. This distinction is especially relevant in the RAS ecosystem, where the same ransomware can be deployed by various actors. For example, stating that an organization was targeted by Black Hat ransomware describes the tool used but doesn't necessarily reveal the perpetrator. Moreover, the prevalence of shared playbooks among cyber criminals further blurs these lines. These playbooks, like the one exposed in the 2022 Conti leaks, provide step-by-step -step guidance for executing attacks, suggesting that similar attack patterns might originate from different actors using the same instructions. While clustering is a powerful tool for identifying patterns and behaviors in, cy in cyber threat, it's not synonymous with attribution. Our goal is to detect and anticipate these patterns to prevent further ransomware deployments without getting entangled in the complex web of attributing every action to a specific actor. Just to reiterate, clustering and attribution refer to different stages and methodologies in the analysis of the cyber threat. Clustering involves grouping together related cyber incidents, malware samples, TTPs based on shared characteristics or behaviors. The purpose of clustering is to identify patterns that suggest activities that stem from the same threat actor or campaign without necessarily identifying the specific actor. Clustering is a way to manage and interpret the vast amounts of data collected in cyber defense efforts. It's about finding the signal in the noise and understanding how desperate events may be connected. Techniques used in clustering can include analyzing malware code similarities, sharing command and control infrastructure, common attack patterns, or even the time of day attack attacks tend to occur. Attribution, on the other hand, is the process of identifying the actual threat actor or group behind a set of cyber activities. This step goes beyond clustering to make informed guesses or hypotheses and provide evidence about who is responsible for the attack. Attribution can be challenging due to the ability of skilled threat actors to disguise their identity and location, use compromised infrastructure belonging to innocent third parties, and employ various techniques to mislead and misdirect. Attribution often relies on a combination of technical intelligence human intelligence or human, signals intelligence or SIGINT, and sometimes geopolitical context to link cyber activities to specific groups or nation states. The practical application of clustering. Identifying patterns that lead to ransomware attacks is far from straightforward. Ideally, we could pinpoint unique malware signatures exclusive to specific groups, making detections a breeze. However, the reality of RASC complicates matters. The tools used by affiliates are often widely available and legitimate, and their tactics are commonly seen across various attacks. This necessitates a deeper examination beyond just the tools used. We must scrutinize how they were deployed, their purpose, and their sequence in the attack chain, paying close attention to the mutate of each step. Humans, including cyber criminals, are creatures of habit. Once an affiliate discovers an effective attack methodology, they're likely to stick with it, at least partially. This doesn't imply uniformity across all attacks within a cluster. Variances are inevitable due to diver the diverse nature of target networks, with each, each with its own unique security posture and infrastructure. Consequently, we observe adaptations in tactics, techniques, and procedures, or TTPs, to navigate these differences. RAS has notably lowered the entry barrier to cybercrime, allowing individuals with minimal technical expertise to execute sophisticated attacks. 
This influx of less experienced affiliate often leads to operational missteps, inadvertently leaving a digital trail of breadcrumbs. These clues, while not always glaringly obvious, are invaluable for defenders. Our focus should be on those distinct and nuanced details that are difficult to mimic without a comprehensive playbook. In terms of what to track, we must be strategic. Simple indicators like IP addresses, domain names, and hashes, though easily alterable, can still offer insights, especially when detailing, dealing with less cautious affiliates. More enduring and telling are the higher tier elements such as TCPs and the consistency of the setup use of the attack infrastructure. Even routine tactics when applied with a unique consistency or order can offer a highly uh, can highlight a signature pattern. Practically, this involves contrasting broad, commonly employed tactics against more specific ones. By meticulously analyzing these aspects, we can piece together the puzzle of an affiliate's modus operandi. By turning these insights into proactive defenses against future ransomware deployments. To illustrate the practical application of tracking specific tactics within ransomware activities, let's consider this comparative table. The table juxtaposes commonly observed broad tactics against their more nuanced counterparts. For instance, performing an NTDS dump to extract credentials is a widespread tactic. However, executing this dump using specific commands that output a uniquely named temporary folder elevates the specificity of the action. Similarly, while it's not unusual for attackers to create user accounts with admin passwords, the creation of accounts with a particular username and a predefined password using batch scripts points to a more distinct pattern. The use of batch script for laying the groundwork for ransomware is common, but when these scripts have consistent functions, interact in a predictable manner, and even named gen generically, the consistency in their application hints at a unique actor group. Moreover, registry modifications for persistence are a staple in many attacks, yet the deployment of a PowerShell script by a specific malware loader that adds a particular run key points to a higher level of specificity. In the realm of ransomware, these granular details serve as telltale signs. When observed across various incidents, they suggest a pattern too precise to be coincidental. This approach underpins a case study we're about to delve into, showcasing how crew tracks distinct RAS activities, leading to the deployment of various ransomware strains. These case studies exemplify the importance of focusing on specific, consistent details within broader attack patterns. By identifying and understanding these nuances, we can enhance our ability to detect and respond to ransomware activities much more effectively. One such cluster labeled CTAC 5484 was involved in deploying Hive, Royal, Black Basta, and Cactus ransomware over approximately 10 month period. The first incident leading to Hive ransomware deployment on January 21st, 2023 is particularly notable given that Hive was dismantled by law enforcement merely five days later. Subsequent incidents within this cluster saw initial access in January but varied in the timing and type of ransomware deployed, demonstrating adaptability in the attacker's operations. Despite the diversity in ransomware used, a consistent behavioral pattern emerged across these incidents. For example, there was uniformity in the setup of administrator accounts, in the naming conventions of the scheduled tasks, and the use of identical batch scripts for initial setup. Regardless of ransomware variant deployed, the packaging was consistent, a zip archive named after the victim organization containing the ransomware executable and secured with a simple password 1234 was found. In our examination of CTAC 5484, we observed consistent behavioral patterns across various ransomware deployments, including Hive, Royal Black Basta, and Cactus. However, our initial analysis extended beyond this specific CTAC, revealing that intriguing connections with a broader ransomware activity pattern, particularly with Royal Ransomware. 
royal ransomware, typically associated with a closed group not known for ex external affiliations, was developed in incidents that shared patterns with CTAC 5484. This raised questions about Royal's operation, operational model, suggesting the possibility of a covert affiliate recruitment, a departure from the more public solicitation methods seen in other ransomware groups. Out of the six Royal ransomware incidents here, over a three-month period, two of the attacks exhibited TTPs consistent with CTAC 5484. Similarly, CTAC 5119 demonstrated a consistent use of initial access methods and a notable shift in command and control tools from port starter to system BC, despite changing the ransomware deployments from by city to Reseda. This consistency in tactics, coupled with the timing overlap and thematic similarities in data leak postings, led to speculation about the relationship between Vice City and Reseda operators. These insights underscore the nuanced nature of ransomware operations, where affiliates and tactics can evolve, reflecting broader trends within the cybercriminal ecosystem. Industry reporting plays a crucial role in piecing together these puzzles, allowing for collaborative understanding and response to these emerging threats. For instance, the correlation between CTAC 5484 and Microsoft's Storm 0216 based on shared indicators and tactics highlights the importance of sharing intelligence across the cybersecurity community. Such collaborations enhance our collective ability to identify, attribute, and mitigate ransomware activities despite the inherent challenges in drawing definitive conclusions. The dynamic landscape of ransomware activities demands a nuanced approach to tracking and tracking and analysis. By focusing on specific patterns and leveraging industry insights, we can better navigate the complexities of cyber threats and contribute to a more secure digital environment. These insights underscore the nuanced nature of ransomware operations, where affiliations and tactics can evolve, reflecting broader trends. Um, this knowledge is really pivotal for the response and detective teams, enabling them to identify and preemptively block malicious behaviors before they reach the impact stage. It's worth noting here that the concept of clustering extends beyond the analysis of widespread incidents. Many of you, whether working within a specific organization or providing services to a limited client base, may not encounter numerous ransomware attacks every day, or at least I hope you don't. Yet the principle of clustering remains relevant for cyber threat intelligence analysts across the board, a core function is to sift through the quality of open source reporting to stay abreast of the threat landscape and inform emerging threats and trends for proactive incident response. Building these profiles and mind maps on known ransomware allows analysts to align observed attack patterns with the established patterns offering crucial intelligence for investigations. However, in the RAS ecosystem, where attack chains can lead to various ransomware strains or the same strain through different methods, these profiles risk becoming overly broad or similar, similarly diluting their specificity. The key here lies in looking beyond the ransomware itself and focusing on the activities tied to specific actors or clusters. This approach may not always be straightforward as ransomware intelligence doesn't always link back to a distinct actor or cluster, and the proliferation of acronym heavy cluster names can be daunting. Nevertheless, the effort to categorize behaviors under specific clusters or actors rather than by the ransomware used enhances our ability to discover targeted actionable intelligence. This specifically is crucial for effectively blocking malicious activities before they can fulfill their objectives. Here the adage, knowledge is, is power, takes on a literal meaning. But in our field, it's not just about what you know, it's also about who you can share it with and how. 
Collaboration and information sharing are the linchpins in building proactive and resilient defense against cyber threats. Let's talk about personal relationships first. These are the bedrock of trust. Analyst to analyst communication allows for the exchange of tacit knowledge that our machines just can't process, like intuition and experience. Inside our organizations, fostering cross-functional communities ensure that these insights form the security team amplify across departments, creating a unified front across these threats. But our efforts can't be siloed within our own walls. Cross-company and network sharing through mechanisms like ISACs broaden our horizon. They turn individual insights into communal wisdom, giving us the advantage of scale. And let's not overlook the importance of engaging with law enforcement. By cooperating with legal authorities, we not only reinforce our efforts, but also contribute to the broader fight against cybercrime, extending the reach of our defenses beyond our immediate network. Our collective security posture is bolstered not just by the strength of our firewalls, but by the density and quality of our communication networks. Let's commit not only to defending together, but thriving together in this digital stage. Critical Start's Managed Threat Intelligence offers dark web monitoring services to help organizations protect their valuable assets and mitigate potential threats. The service focuses on monitoring open, deep, and dark web sources to provide insights into threat actors' operations, enabling businesses to take appropriate action one of the key functions of MTI includes finding and tracking stolen intellectual property, safeguarding customers and executives from phishing and impersonation attacks. The service also helps identify and expose insider threats or premeditated attacks by monitoring dark web mentions of an organization's name and assets. In addition to threat monitoring, MTI detects data leakage by continually scanning various sources of compromised credentials and exposed sensitive technical documents, documents or intellectual property. We also maintain a database of millions of breach credentials, helping organizations instantly identify potential exploitations. The Managed Threat Intelligence Service is seamlessly integrated into our organization's existing security operation within Critical Start's MDR, enhancing visibility across multiple tools and providing valuable context and insight. This integration empowers businesses to better operationalize security and protect their vital assets. Today's digital security landscape is consistently evolving with threat actors becoming more sophisticated and their methods more elusive with the democratization of ransomware. Managed threat intelligence is our comprehensive answer to these dynamic challenges. With premium intelligence, we tackle complex security threats. These are multifaceted and often hidden within vast amounts of data. Our resolution involves deploying advanced analytics and expert human analysis to decipher these threats. The outcome? Strategic defense enhancement. Organizations gain a fortified security posture with actionable insights, enabling them to tailor their defense mechanisms proactively and stay ahead of threats. When it comes to dark web monitoring, the issue at hand is covert operations and data trading. These clandestine active activities often are often missed by con conventional monitoring. Our dark web surveillance capabilities unearth these hidden threats. Resulting outcome is operational resilience. And by being aware of the dark market's pulse, organizations can anticipate and prepare for potential breaches, reducing the impact of incidents. Finally, requests for intelligence or RFIs address the issue of the rapidly evolving attack vectors. The, th the cyber threat landscape changes faster than most organizations can keep up with. Through RFIs, we provide tailored intelligence that informs an organization's specific needs. The outcome here, dynamic risk management and decision making, with customized intelligence at their disposal, organizations can make informed decisions swiftly, adapting their strategies to mitigate these emerging risks. MTI isn't just about responding to threats. It's about staying one step ahead through premium intelligence, dark web monitoring, and RFI 
or request for intelligence, we provide a shield that's not just strong, but also intelligent response, ensuring a security infrastructure that is both immediate in the threat and mitigation and robust in the future. As we conclude, it's important to recognize the intricate balance in leveraging external intelligence reports, such as those from Microsoft. While, value, while we value and trust these insights, a higher degree of direct evidence is crucial for establishing high confidence connections. These, um, these cautious approach to analyzing and aligning external reporting underscores complexity and delicacy involving clustering and the foundational steps toward attribution. Thank you for your attention today and engagement. In the realm of tracking ransomware affiliates and their evolving tactics, there is much more we can discuss. I'm happy to answer any questions or further discussions on these topics. Victoria is going to launch a poll. I'll turn it back over to her now, and then we can um, pursue uh, question and answer session. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Callie. Yeah, as Callie mentioned, if you can just go to the poll tab um, in the chat and answer that question. Um, we have a couple questions here, so I can get started. Um, all right. Do you summarize the threat intel you observe on your platform and share with other agencies such as NSA or DHS? We do. We have several um, sort of uh, differentiating um, ways that we disseminate uh, our intelligence. Um, obviously, we stick very closely to our TLP. Um, so depending on what we can and can't disseminate, uh, that's that's pretty industry standard. Um, but we do affiliate with um, both three-letter agencies and several different ISACs um, for information sharing purposes. Uh, does this involve AI to detect threats? So we do have AI capabilities. Um, the, the, I guess the short answer is um, there's often a confusion between AI and ML. Um, we tend to lean more closely into the ML because it allows for a little bit more nuanced human analysis. Um, but we are uh, actively, as I think most organizations are in the Intel space, actively um, increasing our AI uh, and automated capacities for Intel gathering and, and, and analysis. Great. Um, is your integration better with CrowdStrike or Microsoft Defender? Um, we actually support both tools. Uh, so there, there, isn't, <laughs> there isn't a sort of one's better than the other. It's just whatever playbook the customer uses or whatever tool set is relevant for the organization is, is the one that we support. Absolutely. Um, great. So what are your thoughts um, on the new tool dropped for Red Team by Microsoft, if you've seen that? Uh, yeah, I saw sort of the the synopsis of it, but I haven't had a chance to play with it just yet. Uh, so I don't I don't have a strong opinion just yet, um, but I'd be happy to engage. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn and I'd, I'd love to chat more. Awesome. Uh, your thoughts on the shutdown of Lockbit and what to expect next? My thoughts on the shutdown of Lockbit. So we kind of see, um, I, I typically what you see is sort of this sort of splintering, right? We saw the same thing with Conti, splinter into different groups. Some people get absorbed into other affiliates. Some people start doing their own thing. There's usually a rebranding effort that happens um, depending on which segment you're talking about. Um, some subsets of the group tend to capitalize on their skills attacking a specific vertical. So you see a group splinter off that, you know, maybe they target uh, finance specifically, or maybe this other group has a more technical mind and they are, you know, they spin into the development of a new, a new um, type of malware or something like that. So I would expect some splintering. I think it's a little early to tell exactly how that's going to play out. Um, but, but, I think clustering um, helps because you can kind of identify um, similar TTPs um, based on what you know about, you know, how Lockbit is used. Um, you can kind of identify groups that that take some some parts of that and and kind of um, spin off into their own thing. Great. It looks like we have some more. Keep the questions coming. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you apply this clustering approach to all threat intel or just ransomware? 
we apply it to all threat, all all threat intel. Mm -hmm. So um, ransomware, all types of malware. Um, yeah, it, it's primarily applicable for ransomware, just because that's kind of the or malware in general, because that's kind of the the overarching umbrella term. Um, ransomware is a type of malware, so um, we do apply it for for all threat intel, though. Mm -hmm. Great. What sort of reporting do you provide to customers? Can customers ask for Intel reports written by Critical Start's threat intelligence analysts to be given to decision makers? Absolutely. Yep. Um, so our, we have two kind of variations. Our managed or MDR customers have sort of a, a list of things that they're allowed to ask for. And then our managed threat intelligence customers, um, we try really hard on that side to really focus on being proactive and kind of understanding the environment, understanding the tools that they're running, any sensitivities that the organization has, um, what industry they're in, what we know about the threat groups that target that industry, victim, all of the things that kind of go into that. I um, mean, we try to be really proactive um, in, in, our, in our paid offering, um, but we absolutely, um, we've got a you know a whole document of of uh, reasonable intelligence requirements and 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 sample asks that we answer on a on a daily basis for our customers. So um, they are absolutely more than welcome to submit an RFI. Great. Uh, looks like a couple more. Do you provide hunting packages based on orgs industry or hunting packages for specific threat actors? Um, we don't have them packaged that way specifically. Um, we, our threat hunting team and our CTI team work really, really closely together. Our threat hunting team is really focused on our internal tool and our internal platform. Um, they, they query core quite regularly. They look for trends. Um, they identify new attacks, um, things that we haven't seen, um, any sort of like pattern recognition in the same way that our CTI team does that um, in the wild. And then they kind of come together and say, CTI is seeing this in the wild. We're seeing this within our, you know, X number of customer environments. What can we do? And they, they kind of pass that along to our threat research team, see if there's any malware samples we can grab, tear it apart, understand better what's happening, and then build detections based on those use cases. Great. Uh, lastly, can you tell us more about what's coming for MDR and from Critical Start? More about what's coming from MDR. Um, I can tell you a little bit. <laughs> um, I would I would probably redirect you to um, some of the folks on the marketing side um, for any more detail than what I can offer. Um, but what what I'm most excited about is is kind of the um, risk assessment and the um, ma the managed vulnerability offering, um, and just mostly because those play very nicely with um, what my team uh, is focused on. Um, and so from on the risk assessment side, um, that data is great for us, right? We can kind of identify where the gaps are within our customer subset. We can capitalize on that by um, curating more specific intelligence based on the, the, the trend, right? The risks that our customers are facing. Um, and then on the managed uh, vulnerability side, um, with our managed vulnerability service, getting in additional details around asset inventory and getting in additional details around sort of like labeling critical assets, understanding more about the customer infrastructure, getting vulnerability scans in and being able to overlay our vulnerability intelligence on top of the, um, the, the data that we're getting from um, the product side of the house is really exciting. Um, so that's kind of what I'm most excited about. Um, that's that's kind of the next uh, phase for our team is incorporating some of that stuff. And then of course, AI, AI is always very exciting. We can talk about AI all day, um, but but those are some of the things that come, come to mind first. Awesome, thank you so much, Callie. And thank right. you so much for everyone for joining. Um, a couple of people asked about the slides. We'll be sending out the recording within 24 hours. So of course you'll see the slides there. Uh, we look forward to continuing our conversation with you and hope to see you at the next one. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much.